Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone. So this is the other side of matchless gifts, meaning here in front of us, Prabhupada is sitting where we normally sit. Oh, what's going on? Oh dear. So that's where we would normally sit. So it's like we're sitting in, we're facing Prabhupada. Sorry about this. We're just giving you logistics and I'm sorry i think it adds to the excitement and then this is where everyone would <coughs> sit and if you see all the way back there it's the door that everyone walks through to come here so you can see it's quite narrow actually but it's kind of longish longish but it's narrow so this is the other side of matchless gifts if that makes sense this is the entrance. Yeah, all right. To match this game. <laughs> out there is twenty six second. Out there is Second Avenue. Second Avenue. We're number twenty six. <clears throat> all right. Canto four, chapter twelve, text thirty six. We're in number twenty six, and we're going to read number thirty six. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Now, the third time, you don't shout it, but your octane goes up. Your o octane goes octane. up. Whatever. What is my octane? That's like, oh, oh, what, that's how you measure petrol. Lord. Gas. All right, 36. The self-effulgent Vaikuntha planets, by whose illumination alone all the illuminating planets within this material world give off reflective light, cannot be reached by those who are not merciful to other living entities. Mm. Only persons who constantly engage in welfare activities for other living entities can reach the Vaikuntha planets. Papa. Here is a description of two aspects of the Vaikuntha planets. The first is that in the Vaikuntha sky there is no need of the sun and moon. This is confirmed by the Upanishads as well as Bhagavad Gita. Na tad vasayate suryo na sasanko na pavaka. In the spiritual world, the Vaikuntha locals are themselves illuminated. There is therefore no need of sun, moon, or electric light. It is in fact the illumination of the Vaikuntha Lokas which is reflected in the material sky. Mm. Only by this reflection are the suns in the material universe illuminated. After the illumination of the sun, all the stars and moons are illuminated. In other words, all the luminaries in the material sky borrow illumination from Vaikuntha Loka. From this material world, however, people can be transferred to the Vaikuntha Loka if they incessantly engage in welfare activities for all other living entities. Such incessant welfare activities can really be performed only in Krishna consciousness. There is no philanthropic work within this material world but Krishna consciousness that can engage a person 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. How do you go? <coughs> there we go. So, what did we get from that? So, I was slightly distracted when I was reading. <coughs> <laughs> so, the Vaikuntha planets are illuminating all the other. Actually, yeah, we made this point a couple of chapters or cantos ago because we were walking down um, Bloomsbury in London, England, now I'm homesick, that we were in Bloomsbury and it was winter and it was dark, like, and it wasn't good street lighting, no, it wasn't dodgy because it's Bloomsbury, but it was, you know, it's dark. And I had this realisation that this is the natural constitutional position of the material world, mm -hmm. as it's explained in the, actually in the Balfour mm -hmm. in the Canto 1 or... It's explained in lots of the Cantos and... That dark shit right there. Oh, what are you doing? So that's a all right. Anyway, so the point was that 
that I know it just really made me think that is the material world. This and is the Vaikuntha planet. Oh, okay. This is the Loka, and this is the material world. You can see it's dark. I said material world. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, see, it's dark. So, yeah, it was just that realization, which obviously now we, you can do, you can have that practical exercise as well because it's dark at the moment, isn't it? It gets dark like five o'clock or whatever. And I was thinking, <coughs> if it weren't for these um, dingy street lights, which weren't doing much good, it would be pitch dark. And it was dark, like I was a bit scared dark. And then <laughs> I was thinking, we require all the art artificial lights and the reflection like it says of the sun moon to light it up these are the lights as it were someone might say no it's not there's sun this yeah that's first I like, can get into that who put that there whatever because no because it's a natural light like the, there's lights in here okay someone fix that electrician came and fix that and someone might light a candle that's a light so this is a light provided by the supreme electrician krishna but the point is material world requires some form of light that's that's what i'm saying there's a squirrel up there i got distracted but, <laughs> but that's what i'm saying that it's a dark, naturally dark lit place. Or non -lit dark place. lit place. <laughs> non lit <laughs> place. And it requires, so then we're hearing here the point that I'll get to and I'll shut up is <laughs> the fucking the planets are illuminating everything in the material world. <laughs> you did it. Well done. <laughs> That was great. Nice explanation. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's interesting and exactly what you said. If it wasn't for the sun, then... And I often see, like, yeah, this material world is like darkness, but the sun is like this hole that lets in the light from the, from the spiritual world, from Vaikuntha into, into uh, Kunta. Because Vaikunta means a place of no distress, and Kunta means a place of perpetual distress. So we're in Kunta, so it's a dark place, exactly. Wonderful. Next paragraph. A Krishna conscious being is always engaged in planning how to take all of suffering humanity back home, back to Godhead. Amazing. Even if one is not successful in reclaiming all the fallen souls back to Godhead, still because he is Krishna conscious, his path to Vaikuntha Loka is open. He personally becomes <coughs> qualified to enter the Vaikuntha Lokas. And if anyone follows such a devotee, he also enters into Vaikuntha Loka. Others who engage in envious activities is known as karmis. Envious activities. Karmis are envious of one another. Simply for sense gratification, they can kill thousands of innocent animals. Ganis are not as sinful as karmis, but they do not try to reclaim others back to Godhead. They perform austerities for their own liberation. Yogis are also engaged in self-aggrandizement by trying to attain mystic powers. But devotees, Vaishnavas, who are servants of the Lord, come forward in the actual field of work in Krishna consciousness to reclaim fallen souls. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Only Krishna conscious persons are eligible to enter into the spiritual world. That is clearly stated in this verse and is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita wherein the Lord says that there is no one dearer to Him than those who preach the gospel of Bhagavad Gita to the world. Again, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Well, that's a very powerful purport um, and worth highlighting, which I'll do in a moment. Um, yeah, so Prabhupada breaks down the three different levels of yogis that we often hear referred to. The karmi, who performs maybe karma yoga, yoga but then that would be a karma yogi. Um, but a karmi is, uh, I remember hearing once that uh, karmis, the actual term karmi, 
refers to someone who performs karma yoga. Um, and those persons are generally, we often use the term to refer to materialistic people. Um, and they are material. Karmi, karmis, uh, in, the, in the actual traditional <laughs> sense, are also materialistic. But they perform regular sacrifices daily. They will, you know, make offerings into the sacrificial fire. They, they perform things in accordance with the, the rules and regulations of worshiping God. But they do it in order for their own betterment and to get some material gain out of it. And the jnani is someone who cultivates uh, knowledge, transcendental knowledge, but their interest is just, I have to get myself out of this material world. So like that. Then the yogis, the kind of astanga yogis or different types of yogis, they perform austerities. Again, it's selfless, selfish because they're just trying to manifest some mystic cities. So like that, so Prabhupada's main point here is that the bhaktas, the devotees of the Lord, um, they are, their intention is to deliver the fallen conditioned souls back to the spiritual world. And that's, and if, whether they do it or not, it doesn't matter. Just because they want to do it, because they try to do it, then the door to the spiritual world opens for them. Hare Krishna. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Text 37. Persons who are peaceful, equipoised, cleansed and purified and who know the art of pleasing all other living entities keep friendship only with devotees of the Lord. They alone can very easily achieve the perfection of going back home, back to Godhead. Oh, Paul. The description of this verse fully indicates that only devotees are eligible to enter into the kingdom of God. The first point stated is that devotees are peaceful, for they have no demands for their personal sense gratification. They are simply dedicated to the service of the Lord. Karmis cannot be peaceful because they have immense demands for sense gratification. As for Gyanis, they cannot be peaceful because they are too busy trying to attain liberation or merge into the existence of the Supreme. Similarly, yogis are also restless to get mystic power. But a devotee is peaceful because he is fully surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thinks of himself as completely helpless. Hmm. Just as a child feels complete peace in depending on the parent. So a devotee <clears throat> is completely peaceful for he depends on the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, I look at this point about being peaceful. It makes me think of a comment that was made in class by Adi Purusha Prabhu. Well, he didn't. You, he gave class, but Adi Purusha Prabhu, <laughs> I did a comment. <laughs> and about, well, you were talking about determination and how, was it Jarasandha? was mm. determined and came defeated so many times and he didn't give up and and then Adi Purusha Prabhu said well one could be determined if you are um, focused on who you're being determined for who you're you know trying to serve and please and love and I thought that was a nice really powerful point actually <coughs> um, and especially like it's in terms of Prabhupada saying that Karmis, it can't be peaceful. Gyanis, it can't be peaceful. Yogis are restless. <laughs> but a devotee is peaceful because it's like, like you're focused in one sense on a person. You're focused on knowing what that person likes, doesn't like, and how to get to that person almost, you know, mm -hmm. attain that person or please that person. It's like, it's almost like it's clear and in the previous verse it was saying that what was it social activities philanthropic activities mm. in Krishna consci Krishna consciousness can keep you engaged yeah there's no philanthropic work within this material world but Krishna consciousness that engage a person 24 hours, out, 24 hours a day which is true there's so many different ways to serve you know you might say yeah I chant my rounds or I did a bit of reading I'm done but 
<laughs> there's a lot more you know you can, you can cook your breakfast or your dinner or lunch or whatever with the mind I'm going to eat it but I'm going to offer it first to Krishna or go to work yeah I'm making money to support myself to do this to support this temple or whatever you know I'm going to go and help in this project or how can I serve the mission more how can I preach in my circumstances whatever but I think mean, yeah it makes you peaceful it makes you because there's a goal and there's and it's very um easy it's a point you were making yesterday about it's about being it's not about to be a devotee it's not like giving up and becoming in a certain mold it's being yourself in the sense that and you live the life of a div, of krishna consciousness mm. it's not that it all happens in the temple for example it all happens in this particular caste or mold Mm, you know, mm, mm. you have to become to, like this. No, yeah, you have to ultimately, just be yourself, yeah. which is a divine spark of Krishna's splendor. Right, and you yeah. can do that. Like we can do that. We're in New York at the moment. Someone living in some village in Africa can be a devotee in their circ- You know, in their situation, yes. someone living in Canary Wharf, someone living in Outer Mongolia, Timbuktu. But you can connect in your whatever way you are living and have res- resources you have and be a devotee. Mm. Powerful. I agree. Nice statement. Okay, shall we read this last paragraph? Yeah, it's a bit long, this last paragraph. A devotee is equipoised. Isn't that a challenge? He sees everyone on the same transcendental platform. A devotee knows that although a conditioned soul has a particular type of body according to his past fruitive activities, factually everyone is part of the Supreme Lord. A devotee sees all living entities with spiritual vision and does not discriminate on the platform of the bodily concept of life. Such qualities develop only in the association of devotees means you're only going to get this quality of being equipoised and seeing everyone on the transcendental platform by associating with devotees. Without the association of devotees, one cannot advance in Krishna consciousness. In other places, Prabhupada said, if you think you can be Krishna conscious outside the association of devotees, you're insane. <laughs> Therefore, we have, and in, in, in the association of devotees, sometimes you can think you're insane. Ain't Therefore, ain't <laughs> Therefore, we have established the International Society mm. for Krishna Conscious. Factually, whoever lives in this society automatically develops Krishna Consciousness. There you go. Devotees are dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead is only dear to devotees. On this platform, only can one make progress in Krishna consciousness. Of course, Krishna is kind to everyone, but he's especially kind to his devotees. Persons in Krishna consciousness or devotees of the Lord can please everyone, as, an, as is evident in the Krishna consciousness movement. We invite everyone without discrimination. We request everyone to sit down and chant, Hare Krishna man- chant the Hare Krishna mantra and take as much prasad as we can supply. Where was I when that was done? And thus everyone is pleased with us. <laughs> this is the qualification. Sarva Bhutanu Ranjanaha. As for purification, no one can be more pure than devotees. Anyone who once utters the name of Vishnu immediately becomes purified inside and out. Yasmarat Pundari Kaksham. Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu. Since a devotee constantly chants the Hare Krishna mantra, no contamination of the material world can touch him. Can't touch this. He is therefore actually purified. Muchi Hoi, Shuchi Hoi, Yadi Krishna Bhaje. It is said that even a cobbler or person born in the family of a cobbler can be elevated to the position of a brahmana, shuchi, if he takes to Krishna consciousness. Any person who is purely Krishna conscious and who engages in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is the purest in the mm. whole universe. So, what a statement. This is a very powerful um, purport. It's, um, the thing is, if it's taken the wrong way, it can sound like self-aggrandizement, or it can sound like Prabhupada is just, you know, 
we're the best, of course, where everyone claims they're the best. The, this religious group says it's only us, our way or the highway. Another religious group says we're the best and we'll show you. If you don't believe us, we'll beat you up. And another mm -hmm. group says, you know, we're just naturally the best. We don't have to tell anyone because everybody knows it. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, everyone's declaring themselves the best. And Prabhupada here is making this very bold statement that um, devotees um, are very dear to Krishna because they chant his holy names. They are pure. And because of this, they are the purest people on the planet. Now we have to be careful because we could be a devotee and not really be thinking about the welfare or benefit of other living entities. We could be a devotee and be thinking, just worrying about ourselves. And so the qualification for being a devotee is that we're dedicated to trying to help others go back to be with Krishna. And in the process, we're doing all that we can to help ourselves go back to Krishna so that we're strong to help others go back to Krishna. So I would say that, in one sense, is the qualifier uh, for this paragraph. Otherwise, we shouldn't read that and think, oh, I'm wearing tilak, I'm wearing dhoti, or I chant Hare Krishna, so therefore I'm the purest of the pure. At the same time, while saying that, we should understand that as a devotee, we have a remarkable potency for assisting and helping others. So we should not be, what's that word, miserly with giving our association. We should be, be happy to spend time with um, someone. Actually, thinking about that, uh, just the other day I went into this shop nearby, and when I went in, I was telling you about it, and this, uh, this guy said, Indian, Indian body gentleman said, Rade, Rade. And he was like, looked like he was very happy that I came. And I said, Rade, Rade. And then, you know, I said, Hare Krishna. And he said, Hare Krishna. And then I, you know, asked him for some stuff and got some orange juice and some different bits and pieces. And I went up and I said, oh, where are you from? You're from Vrindavan? You said, Rade, Rade. He said, no, I'm from Gujarat. <laughs> so like then, that. huh? He said, like that, I'm from Gujarat. But, um, so, so then, well, I'm talking like this because I'm an American. So, but, so we just had a chat and I was telling them about the temple and, you know, and they said, oh, we see you and your wife walking. You wear, you wear traditional clothes. We see you in the early morning and then in the <laughs> afternoon we see you. And I was like, just see, people see. And then this morning we walked by yeah. these police, right? Yeah. The police had some yeah, people kind of talking to them on the street and we walked by at like <laughs> well, four, four, well, yeah. quarter to five in the morning. Yeah, going to my and, um, and the one guy just nodded, you know, but then there was a lady cop and, and she said, good morning, good morning. You yeah, know, she was like, like, sure, what, what the you? heck are you? <laughs> and I was saying that, you know, after we walked by that I could, I could hear her brain ticking like, who were they? What were those people? <laughs> and I was thinking that if somehow in her search for identity, if somehow Hare Krishna came up, then what a benefit for her that she chanted Hare Krishna within her mind. And if she didn't know and she posed the question to the universe, like, who, are, who were those people? <laughs> then Krishna will make an arrangement for her over, you know, may not be so long, to have this revelation that oh those people are Hare Krishnas and somehow just by thinking Hare Krishna being nice to a Hare Krishna like that people are made fortunate people are benefited so I'm rambling now we need to finish we've gone way over time any concluding words no very fortunate to be here yes in this sacred space we are indeed I'm just looking at the you know, in the camera behind us, thinking, "Gosh, how how many people walk through those doors?" Sat here, powerful people, listening to the Swami, waiting for the Swami to come through the door. Mm. So, far out. Hadi hadi. Thank you all very much. Please keep joining us. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Comment. Hadi hadi.